Hi guys, uh, this is going to be an overview of WASD's keyboard. Um, they're a relatively new company actually in the mechanical keyboard business, um, but they have brought something really cool and unique, so I want to show it off to you guys um, in this video. Basically, I'm just going to go over all the specifics of the keyboard um, and what to expect if you would like to buy one and the pros and cons of getting one of these. If you would like to hear the sound demonstration of um, of mechanical key switches, I have that video linked right here. Uh, you can click on it now. And it's also in the description if you look at that. So here's how they package it. Um, that thing you saw me take out first was a wrist stress, which is an add-on you can buy. And here's the box itself. Um, just right in there with some brown paper as cushion. So I got this keyboard uh, because I'm going off to UC Santa Barbara next year. So I got the school colors, yellow and blue, blue and gold, but obviously I don't have gold. <laughs> Here's a little paper which um, asks you to write a review on their site, which I'll be doing shortly. Uh, the keyboard's covered in this foam uh, wrapping, which most mechanical keyboards will be covered in something like that. And here's the USB cable. Uh, it is fixed onto the keyboard, so it's not a detachable one. Um, and then any other accessories you get besides the wrist rest, which is too big, will be in the box under this cardboard. So we'll go over all these later. Um, this is a wired keycap puller, which is an alternative to the plastic ones. I'll show you how it works later. Then you have your PS2 adapter, a couple extra keycaps, which will be included in every one. Um, but these won't. These were sent to me special so I can show you what they have to offer um, for a little bit extra money. Uh, so those O-rings and the extra keycaps won't be included in yours unless you pay extra for them. So that's a quick overview of what the packaging looks like and what you can expect when you open the box. So now let's go ahead and look at the keyboard itself. Um, this pattern uh, is part of the customization I was talking about. You can customize the pattern to be anything you want. Um, and here's the cable. It has a nice thick braid on it. And with mechanical keyboard, the cable is something you really want to pay attention to uh, because mechanical keyboards will last so long that the thing that's most likely to actually break first will be the connection from the cable to the keyboard. So uh, right here, they have a nice thick rubber grommet which will keep it um, nice and sturdy on there and unlikely to fray and stuff. It's just a standard USB cable, but you do have the PS2 adapter right here which will provide you with N key rollover uh, should you decide to use it and if your motherboard has a slot in the back for it. Now I got um, a checker pattern uh, in my own sort of way, like there's lots of different ways to do it obviously. Um, I got sort of slanted lines down, I think it looks pretty cool, but at the top right here you have the WSC logo, it's pretty minimalist, and then uh, the lock lights, which the lock light indicators. So here's just a close up of the keyboard. Um, you can see uh, the laser etching, how it looks, and the pattern that I chose to get. and then. Also, I got engraved into the space bar right here, UCSB and my name, which I think is pretty sick that WAC lets you engrave or even write with laser etching anything you want on any key. And I'll show you how that works later as we go over their website. So here's uh, the thickness of it. Um, it's a little bit taller of a keyboard than my Leopold is. So if you're a kind of person who's really picky about where their wrists um, are in relation to uh, how high their fingers have to go to type, then just keep that in mind. It's a bit thick of a mechanical keyboard. Then on the back we have these four rubber feet and the two legs which just have one height. Um, just a basic, very nice, solid keyboard. And that's that. So now let's go on and look at some of the accessories that are offered with it. Alright, so I laid them out here for you. Um, these keycaps on the bottom right were the ones I was talking about that aren't going to be included in every keyboard. It's just for me to show you what uh, colors they are. So this, yeah, the PS2 adapter on the left, I showed you that earlier. Um, these two keys, they include them in every keyboard, and I believe they include the same color as whatever color you got your Windows keys to be. So uh, I'm not actually sure of the purpose, but they they have this little glossy dome on them, and you can switch those out. Uh, but I don't know why they're included, to be honest. Those keys, yeah, those are all the colors they offer, so if you like to sort of pause the video, that's what they look like in real life, and um, and you can decide what colors you want if you're trying to design it. Now, this is the wire keycap puller, 
and you sort of bend it apart like that and as you can see it goes right around the key and you just turn it 45 degrees or you can just pull straight up for some keys and uh, we'll go over that later we'll show you how to uninstall some keys later but uh, this is a traditional keycap puller which um, obviously doesn't adjust in size so you can't get the large keys especially like the big shift key the wire keycap puller can even do that and it, as I show you right here, it can go fine around the alt key. You can do it vertically, but it doesn't um, clip on vertically, the plastic one I mean. Um, this is the wrist rest, which I got separate. It's about eight bucks, I believe, extra to be added. And um, I think it's a really nice thing to include because uh, I wasn't sure uh, or maybe you might not be sure if you want your wrist to be higher or lower when you type. And so it just goes on to the front like that, but um, I'll show you how to install it in a second. These O-rings are really cool, actually. Um, you put them on the underside of the switches, and they dampen the sound. So they just go right around that circle um, peg thing right there. And when you press the key down, um, it dampens not only the sound, but it gives you less key travel distance and a little bit of a squishy feel. So we'll go over how those work in a second. All right, but first let's uh, go over the wrist rest. So it's just a basic plastic piece, but it, it's nice. Um, it's not glossy or anything. It has a nice finish. Um, and these two little slots in the bottom of the keyboard on the back, um, the wrist rest just clips right in. So just go ahead and plop it on top and press down and it should clip in uh, very nicely. And then you can go ahead and turn it back over and it will look very nice and finished um, just like this. So it's really cool how it's uniform um, across the, the whole keyboard. And if you'd like your wrist to be higher, it might be very comfortable for you. Um, I used to use one of these when I played StarCraft because um, it would be easier for me to reach the F keys and such. So now I don't have to, and it's really nice built into the keyboard. All right, so now I'd like to give you a close up of the laser etching um, and what it looks like. Oops, I'll drop the key there. but. This is how you would remove a key with the wire keycap puller. You sort of turn it and then just pull straight up and it usually will catch the keycap too. So it's kind of nice like that. I'll put it on this paper here so the camera can focus. Um, one thing I noticed is that with the blue keys in specific, uh, the laser etching doesn't show up that well. Um, it shows up much, much better on the yellow keys. You can see there, the alt is very crisp and clear, even though I got a very tiny font, the smallest font that they offer. But on the blues, it's kind of hard to see, which is fine for me because I use, um, or I don't look at the keyboard when I type, but if you are someone who really needs to see clearly what, uh, what is printed on the keys, then just keep that in mind if you're gonna order with uh, blue keycaps. Um, you can customize the font on any key. So I got the smallest font because I think it looks pretty clean and more professional. And that is why uh, I have all the fonts, I mean, all the font sizes on every key, very small. Um, and I also use Arial. They have like six or so uh, fonts that you can use. And I'll show you all the options uh, later as we take a look at their website. But um, Pretty much on all the other keys, I think except blue, the laser etching shows up very nicely. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so here's a look at what um, each of the colors looks like that WAC offers. So we have a black here, then a dark gray, and then we have this old style light gray, and a white, and then we have some rainbow colors here. Um, <clears throat> the only one we're sort of missing is kind of a pink or purple, uh, and the red one, Actually, it it's not that pure of a red. It actually looks to me more like a little bit of a rust color, but it's not not that significant. It still looks very nice um, in combination with the others. So yeah, just the pink one or a, a purple one in the future, that'd be kind of cool to see from WAC, sort of complete the color list there. All right, so here, I just want to show you guys um, how easy it is to take O-rings off and put them on. Uh, it's just the same process, but I've used the wire keycap puller. Um, obviously, use that to take the keycaps off, but I found it's a pretty good tool for getting the O-ring off, too. I just sort of stick one end of it in a the corner there and sort of just drag up and pull it off. And you can see that one popped right off pretty easily. And uh, make sure you don't lose any because they're 
uh, like 20 bucks to replace for the set. You can even pinch it sort of at the end right here. Um, and you have sort of a little holder for it. But yeah, it's just as easy to put back on. You just lay the O-ring right over the um, circle in the middle and depress down. And I'm removing these so I can show you guys the different sound tests. Um, and that's in the other video, which is linked in the description if you want to check that out. All right, so here are the three O-rings WSD has to offer. Um, the one on the left is 50A hardness, uh, four millimeter reduction. Um, the reduction is basically how thick it is. That means how much it reduces the key travel time. The one in the middle is uh, 40A hardness with four millimeter reduction, and the one on the right is 40A hardness with two millimeter reduction, so it's a thin one. Um, I've tried them all. Sorry about the shaky paper. Uh, I'm holding it up in front of the camera, but I've tried them all. And I just want to give you guys my thoughts to help you decide if you th are considering O-rings. All three of them, by the way, do a spectacular job at reducing the sound. Um, so I'm not going to consider that, really. Um, they're all basically the same in my mind, but I'm just going to focus on how they feel. So the one on the right, which is a thin one, I didn't like very much because I feel like um, it doesn't reduce the key travel that much. And it's just a squishy thing. So... Um, it kind of makes the keys feel cheap to me, so I don't like that one. The one in the middle um, also makes them feel kind of squishy, but it reduces the key travel enough that it's kind of nice not to have to press the keys down so far uh, if you hit it kind of more hard than you need to. Um, and then the black one was my favorite because it was stiff enough that it didn't feel, it didn't make the keyboard feel kind of cheap like a membrane uh, keyboard. It just made it feel nice and crisp uh, key press while reducing the distance and the sound. So. If I had to choose, I would choose the black ones, um, but keep in mind that your opinion may be completely different than mine. I'm just trying to provide you with my thoughts so that you might have a better time um, deciding which ones to get, if that's something that you guys would like. Also, I want to give you a shot of what the keyboard looks like here without the keycaps on. So I've removed this section um, to take the O-rings off. So that's my progress so far, but I'll go ahead and bring the keyboard up here so you guys can get a better look. Um, so th this is basically what all uh, Cherry MX keycaps look like. They'll just be different colors depending on what they are. Um, so these are the brown ones and as you can see like it's a really nice switch. It's just it's really solid into this uh, plate down here but um, when you take all the keycaps off you can have access to underneath the keys really easily and you can use some compressed air and blow out all the stuff to clean it and or use a q-tip or something so uh, it really makes these keyboards last a long time not only are they really solid um, but you can clean it as much as you want and and make it look like new again uh, so that's really nice all right so let's go check out WASD's website uh, really quick here so if you type in WC keyboards, it should show up in Google um, first. So here's their homepage. Um, you can check out all the tabs for yourself. I highly recommend going to gallery and checking out customer creations and also the other images that gives you a really good idea of what your keyboard is going to look like and what other people have done. You may uh, get inspired with some ideas there. So you can go to products, they have accessories and stuff, um, but the thing that makes them unique is the custom keyboard designer, which uh, if you go ahead and load it up here, you'll see it gives you this interface where all the keys are clickable, and I can go to any key, like let's say the Q key, I can change the keycap color individually to anything I want. And I can even change the text, so instead of Q, I can make it say A, just to confuse people and make it go A, B, C, D, E, all the way across the keyboard and that would probably get annoying because you'd be pressing A for Q, but um, obviously you can be pretty creative with it, so you can do anything you want. Um, you can also change the font. They have a pretty good selection here. There's, there's about like eight text fonts, and then you have the webdings and wingdings, which give you symbols that you can use. Um, so obviously there will be a symbol there if you use these instead, and that's how the arrow keys are done, actually. They, there are default to exclamation point, which is a left arrow and wingdings three, etc. Or the up arrow is done with a numpad. Um, if you hit the select multiple keys button, you can select a whole bunch of them and change the color of these to, let's say, green. And you say accept, and now they're all green. Um, so that's how you would easily change the whole keyboard to a checker pattern, like I did with mine. Keep in mind, though, if you select the uh, arrow keys, 
with a select multiple keys like this, um, it's going to change the font to Arial too. So these will become a real numpad instead of the Lingding. So make sure you change those back before you order it. Um, you can make an account here and save your design, or you can share it with someone else. Um, if you want to show your friends, uh, it creates this URL for you, and you can just link that to them, and it'll auto load what design you had. Now, if you come down here, it has all the options for accessories and stuff. You can get a keyboard, which is obviously the whole keyboard, or just a keycap set um, to replace on your existing mechanical keyboard. Uh, once you select keyboard, you can choose your switch types, and they have blue, brown, black, and red. And then you can choose your O-ring um, if you would like those. And then you can have a wrist dress as well. I got that and showed it in the video. And if you want to upload your own designs, I've seen some pretty cool stuff, like people have uploaded the Team Liquid Pegasus logo and um, uh, their race for StarCraft, etc. Maybe like a force field logo. Um, then you can do that, but it does cost additional money, so make sure uh, you know the cost. And then down here we have a bunch of information. You can go and read up on what each of the options they offer are. Um, and then we have a picture of how each of the keycaps looks, all the different colors with, uh, with laser etching and then engraving. Then you just have specifications and stuff. So that's basically a brief overview, overview of their site. You can check out the other stuff for yourself, but that'll be it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll check out WSD keyboards because they're pretty cool. So see you later.